it's hard to treat this like it's just another model refresh, because how do you approach making a successor to a camera which by storm became the love affair of the entire internet? Daunting, I know, but... Not really for Fuji. You see, they've already made five generations of these, so their answer for version 6 is to treat it like they've always done previously. Just another model refresh. Because the X100 series really took off with the X100V, it's easy to view the X106 as a knee-jerk reaction in response to the popularity of the V. That's the official way Fuji's reading this name, by the way, X106. But bear in mind, this is coming four years after the launch of the V, which makes this the longest gap between two X100 announcements by far. Historically, the improvements between generations have also always followed the pattern of being minor, but significant. Safe to say, if your intentions for getting the 6 include making sure everyone notices you're using the latest, freshest new model, be prepared for- Oh my gosh, is that one of those X100Vs? Oh, you mean this? This is actually the X106. If you look at the model badge here, it says, Case in point, I took a photo of the Fuji booth at a photo fair using the X106, and nobody cared. I mean, this design is a staple icon of the X100 series. It would be unwise to change it up too much, though it is still possible to tell a 6 apart from the old V by paying very close attention to a few very subtle differences in hardware. Head on, the most telling difference would be the red tip on the viewfinder selector of the X100V being no longer red on the 6. In fact, it's now textured to make it much more grippy when flicking the lever about. The control ring on the lens is also now ever so slightly thicker. On the back panel, the only major difference is the drive button being bumped slightly to its right, making it much easier to reach with your thumb. Also, the display button now gets labelled with a Bluetooth icon beside it. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Up top all seems the same, except the focal plane indicator is on a slightly different plane, which implies the internals have been moved about to accommodate the new sensor assembly, which could also explain why the tripod mounting thread has been moved closer to the edge, presumably so it doesn't intercept the sensor. This updated sensor in question is not much of a mystery, being none other than the 40 megapixel X-Trans CMOS 5 HR sensor, aka the same one you'll find in the flagship X-H2 and X-T5. In terms of a resolution bump, 40 megapixels is a pretty massive increment from the X100V's 26 megapixels, and it's this abundance of pixels that's got Fuji changing the default mapping of the lens's control ring to their digital teleconverter feature, which is a fancy way to say cropping in to simulate longer focal lengths. This feature becomes active whenever you're not in manual focus mode. As you turn the lens ring, it punches in and out of the 50mm and 70mm presets, these presets being in full frame equivalents, oddly enough, sounds almost sacrilegious on a Fuji. But even more surprising is the fact that this feature already existed back on the old X100V. It just wasn't the default setup. On the X106, it makes much more sense with a 40 megapixel sensor, but you can still customize the control ring so it's no longer a digital teleconverter control because I've definitely inadvertently changed my frame size more than once by bumping the lens ring. If you're shooting JPEGs or 10-bit HIFs, which are now possible on the X106, the crop is committed to the final image. If you're shooting RAW though, the crop simply gets saved as metadata, meaning file sizes would still be as big, but you retain the full uncropped image. Regardless, you shoot in RAW or JPEG, the EXIF data will still show the image having been shot at the native focal length of 23mm, even if you have engaged it to simulate 50mm or 70mm. When we jump from 26.1 megapixels all the way up to 40 megapixels, Understandably, everyone's going to start worrying about low-light performance. Comparing ISO 12800 shots with noise reduction turned down as far as it'll let me, the X106, surprisingly, does not look that much more noisy. 
But when it comes down to details, the newer higher resolution sensor on the 6 still delivers significantly more detailed images, even in low light. And the 6 does have one more trick up its sleeve to help out when it's dark. It's got IBIS. With six stops of internal stabilization on a 23mm lens, I can quite consistently get sharp handheld images at half a second exposure times. Of course, image stabilization is a good thing under any lighting condition, and typically it's a huge benefit for video as well. I'm not saying you shouldn't shoot video on an X100, but it's gonna look like the camera equivalent of drinking soup out of a wine glass. But if you do so happen to enjoy consuming soup in unconventional ways, Fujifilm will happily indulge you because the X106 can do 4K up to 60p or 6.2K up to 30p. It even gets the red recording indicator frames, which funny enough, are still missing on the X-H2S. And this has F-Lock 2. I guess it's there if you ever need it. But unlike F-Log2, the Reala Ace film simulation is a lot less likely to be underutilized on the X106 because as of current, this is the only camera other than the GFX100 Mark II to have Reala Ace. That is, until they announce their next camera or drop a surprise firmware update. But in case you missed it, when the GFX100 Mark II came out last year, Reala Ace is one of the less conspicuous film sims, but that also makes it very accommodating and very versatile. It's got a punchy yet natural look to it, with a very charming analog-like roll-off into the highlights. Hip firing all these street shots reveals yet another major upgrade over its predecessor, autofocus. The 6 has got the current generation of subject recognition AF, and just general subject tracking is massively improved. On an X100 camera, where snapshots make up a huge chunk of its purpose, a more powerful AF system will directly translate to more keepers. I would say this, along with the addition of IBIS, will be the two most prominent advantages that will be felt when shooting with the 6 compared to the V. Beyond those, the camera doesn't even try to hide how you will find more similarities than differences on this latest model. Call it familiarity or Fuji playing safe, but I tried thinking very hard about this as well. What more can you add to this camera beyond film simulations and better sensors without ruining it? Remember, the X100 cameras are special not because of function, but mainly form. It was the camera that cared about you looking good while capturing a good looking photo. All the charms and quirks which made all the preceding X100 so desired remained pretty much exactly the way they were on the X106. It's still the same hybrid viewfinder, an EVF when you need it, or the rangefinder style OVF with just a frame guide. It makes absolutely no sense when you think about it from a precision standpoint. There's parallax, there's no preview of exposure nor depth of field, but it definitively is the more enjoyable way to shoot on this camera. It still has the same mini digital overlay for the best of both worlds, same IOs, same battery, same lens, which still has the same leaf shutter that lets off nothing more than a quiet tick. It still keeps that internal four-stop ND filter because Fuji has designed for you to take wide-open F2 photos under a sunny day. It's a continuation of a camera which reminded the user to enjoy taking photos. It really isn't that tremendous of an upgrade, but perhaps because it never really needed to be one.